today I have with me a leader whose love for shoes led to the creation of adventure footwear category back when the footwear market in India was unorganized and undergoing a transformation. Please allow me to welcome Mr. Harkirat Singh, Managing Director of Aero Club, who are the makers of Woodland and Wood. His adherence to strong values, vision for the company, and acute perception of the marketing trends has led Woodland and Wood list themselves as one of the top retail brands in the country. We welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Let me begin with asking you, sir. You hail from a family of industrialists. Uh, you ventured into the unorganized uh, shoe market and introduced the adventure footwear category, which we now know is Woodland. Uh, we'd like to know the brand's journey and how has it cemented itself as an eminent uh, brand today in the retail sector. Okay, as you said, yes, uh, I come from a family which uh, had backgrounds of uh, leather and uh, footwear. Yeah. So uh, you know, we we've, we've been uh, into this now almost fifty years, and uh, of course, the start was definitely not with the Indian market, but uh, with markets like uh, Northern America, Canada. Russia, USSR, Australia, USSR, and uh, Northern uh, Europe. So all the cl- uh, cold climate countries. So uh, we were manufacturing actually in Quebec, in Montreal, in, uh, in uh, and so uh, you know like that. That's the extreme weather conditions they have over there. And I think there is where Woodland uh, germinated, or it it. Took a birth, you know, because we were actually making winter boots for women, you know, and these were like outdoor winter winter boots, you know, which are like knee-high boots, you know, and with fur linings and insulated fabrics used and waterproof leathers. So, uh, you know, because uh, there in these countries, you know, in winters it's uh, really deep snow, so you know you need uh, products which can really last long. And they are actually protection to your feet, you know, because there you need it as a necessity. So uh, uh, we were actually experts into that, you know, like so our uh, basic DNA for the company was, you know, outdoor boots and of course winter boots. But uh, yeah, yeah, the story went, you know, like uh, as these markets started diminishing because of the influx of the Chinese products and the erstwhile USSR breaking up. So we were actually in search of new markets, you know, and India was a market because we we belonged to India and, you know, we had tanneries in India. So our manufacturing base was here in India. So it was easy to come to the Indian market. But of course, it was not a very opportunate the big opportunity into the market you know because everything was unorganized as you said you know there were no brands and uh, we didn't know whom to sell you know because we didn't have our own stores so uh, there were only a few organized retailers who were not ready to keep our brand so you know we we it was like okay let's do it you know it wasn't that you know we we actually went for it but you know like we said let's why not uh, give it a try give it a shot so we you know got a hold of a couple of distributors who saw a product and they actually didn't understand you know because it was a sturdy looking men's shoe and uh, you know of course we could not we didn't want to launch our boots here but of course we came out with a shoe with the same properties you know being outdoor and uh, you know all waterproof and you know like technology wise upgraded so actually it was a very new product for the market uh, that time you know so many people didn't understand the value of it but of course the looks of it was very uh, fashion you know because it was a it was a boat shoe you know sailing boat shoe you know which is a very uh, you know uh, a normal shoe to be owned in europe you know because every casual shoe uh, you know like this is a normal casual shoe people wear with jeans and all so um, i think till now it is one of our best sellers you know the boat shoe so uh, it, it became a signature for woodland so every youngster was you know like aping to buy one 
and uh, of course you know like at that time the price we price was very high than the market you know it was like i still remember it was 999 you know and which was not uh, a big number today but at that time you know people thought you know like 1000 rupees ka bhi issue hota hai you know what is it like True. so but then of course you know we struggled to retail into india because retailers were not organized they didn't used to pay and we were not used to this kind of selling you know because in uh, in uh, you know the american market and other markets you know uh, it, the retail is much more organized so your payments are secured everything is done so here it was like always you know like uh, where where are we and what are we doing you know so hmm. uh, in the beginning there was a lot of struggle so we even started opening our own stores you know because we thought you know like we could not showcase our product in a store which was shabby and you know they didn't have the proper pop and uh, materials to sell so you know we launched our own stores and uh, and i think that was the turning point you know because the lifestyle we wanted to show the outdoor lifestyle and for the people to understand it was always better to showcase in a way you know like today we have a website or you know we can uh, show everything online but at that time we could not actually show our uh, product the way we wanted to show it so i think the store was uh, the uh, stores which we opened were mainly in the metros delhi bombay chennai calcutta and they be- became a statement you know because uh, we showcased our brand as an outdoor brand you know we uh, we had apparel to go along with it we had uh, jackets waterproof jackets other technical stuff like backpacks and also it was actually something so fresh in the market and you know like uh, even people who were not going out for trekking and they even like to you know wear this kind of a lifestyle of course for uh, for outdoor loving people it was a you know a blessing you know so they would find everything in india which earlier they used to import probably so uh, so i think that was the basic journey behind woodland and then of course you know with the retail boom we started opening many more stores we were even in the smaller towns and you know we got very good response so india gradually became one of our main markets you know because uh the canadian market and the russian market were going down and this market was growing so it was like for us a very right uh move to do and you know so we focused a lot in the subcontinent and grew the brand here and of course you know like uh, there's a big uh, population of youth so you know that uh, that really helped us so we did a lot of events around the universities colleges and went to different uh, states cities did our events and you know that that's how we connected with our customer very interesting sir and i also must second you on the fact that the brand you know pushes forward the philosophy of not selling a product but selling a lifestyle so i did uh, go through some of your previous interviews and you you know you quoted this line which i now understand is is a testament of uh, a successful journey so i must congratulate you on that thank you so i'm sure the brand must have gone through you know a fair share of challenges as you just mentioned that the unorganized market or promoting yourself as a lifestyle brand but covid i'm sure has impacted the brand in some ways so what were some of the initial steps that you took on the employee side the consumer side and the supplier side also to maintain you know to ensure a smooth run of processes between the manufacturers and distribution team how did you manage that see actually you know it's been almost uh, 26 or 27 years we've been in the indian market even more i think so mm-hmm. you know like we've actually experienced many such you know uh, uh, you know problems <laughs> take time you know and we now become quite immune to uh, you know problems you know so right. uh, i think that's the fun working here in india you know because what is coming next of course this was global but in india of course we gone through much uh, more than this even so of course you know any brand or any organization i think has to be flexible enough to adapt to different conditions you know so mm-hmm. uh, similarly uh, with us here in woodland uh, definitely being in retail and being in a product which is not an essential so we were badly hit you know because stores mm-hmm. were all closed 
you know there were no sales uh, and we have a big army of uh, employees who are you know actually uh, you know uh, the uh, stronghold of our company a brand so we have to look after them so i think but everything went well because you know everything everybody understood you know everybody understood the company everybody understood the brand because mm-hmm. all of us uh, you know we all said you know okay you know we have to survive and we have to thrive so it's not just you know like the difficult times we are all have to you know uh, kind of get together and see how we can go out of this problem so uh, we knew of course we'll come out with a, a, a strong way but of course how long it will take so it was a bit uncertain you know and you know like you never know customer psyche you know because uh, uh, the way the uh, market has come back we even we we thought you know probably it will ta- take much longer you know we in fact we at our uh, brand we thought you know probably uh, mid next year we'll be able to at least do 60% of our business but it happened much before so you know like things were very uh, fluid you know we we had to just see how today is or tomorrow is so we all got together we we um, cut down a lot of costs in fact you know like it helped us cut down a lot of un, uh, unnecessary costs you know which were there in the company uh, the stores we were able to you know squeeze down on number of stores because of course with online coming in stores are very important but like of course the stores which are like borderline kind of stores and where we don't want to you know like uh, we were trying to uh, push them up but during this time you know because rentals were very high manpower was very high so one had to give some hard decisions hard calls and you know like we had to close some stores mm-hmm. but of course you know opening new stores again or expanding again is never a problem you know because if the opportunity is there you can always go back to the normal so Uh, but of course it taught us a lot you know like how actually you you actually come to know what is your core strength where you have to focus so um, i think uh, uh, in a way it went well of course you know, if you say uh, see the negative part we lost a lot of sales but uh, you know like it was for everybody so it was more than how we can help the people during this time than you know, seeing our top line grow right so as you just mentioned that woodland had to rationalize its uh, store count or expenses uh, expenses while you know it was expanding its business online can you give me a sense of the numbers say online versus offline or probably rural areas versus urban areas also how is the omni channel presence of the brand now yielding you uh, better results now that the lockdown is lifted and the foot uh, i mean people are coming back to the stores can you give me a sense of the numbers see uh, pre covid of course we were online available you know our, our website is selling uh, uh, very good to our customers and it's a very good connect it's growing every year so before uh, covid you know we were almost about 12% of our business used to come from online business mm-hmm. and uh, uh, the rest was all uh, from the stores as well as uh, multi brand stores and key stores where we sell um, during covid of course you know like as i told you we closed down some stores uh, and uh, even the multi brand business came down but of course you know once the non essential products started selling online so uh, that grew pretty fast you know so today uh, we have almost close to doubled our online sales and uh, which is like going to be almost about from 10 12 percent to 18 to 20 percent, oh, and right. uh, and uh, the uh, the offline sales, of course, you know, as I told you, uh, business was slow during these months, but now we've seen uh, in the winters because you know our products are more for the winters. You know, we sell a lot of jackets, woolens, yeah. and boots, which are more sold on the in the winters and. Uh, so uh, the sales are almost back to 70-80% in our stores which I think in a few one or two months we might be uh, almost touching the same number as before uh, COVID 
so uh, uh, that way i feel you know like the growth what we got online probably uh, which uh, was to happen probably 4 years or 3 years in uh, it happened during this time you know so uh, a parallel i'll never say there's a, a conflict between uh, brick and mortar stores and online stores because somebody like me i'll always like to go to a shopping mall and buy and wear uh, and then try and then buy but there are a lot of people who are you know like much more comfortable buying online so i think online will be always a parallel uh, medium to sell and the growth we got online a lot of people switched over online buying online so that that's that will be always a addition to our existing sales yeah. so i think uh, it's a blessing in disguise and of course um, if things go well you know like uh, next year will be a super year for us yeah i'm sure i'm sure so uh, while offline uh, retail does remain to be a preferred choice how did you or how are you still promoting uh, you know your products in the absence of substantial in store footfall see now as i told you the uh, the footfalls have now come back mm-hmm. and but we are pushing more we are giving a lot of schemes in our stores so we are uh, Uh, inviting people to come to the stores and uh, likewise you know the all the stores we've made them omni channel you know so that means like any store having you know probably a store down south in kerala has a product which is needed by a customer who's in up north in uh, shimla so uh, that that thing can be delivered from uh, our store in uh, Ch- in uh, kerala to shimla so uh, all the stocks in all the stores have put been put online and all the stores uh, like we have now almost about 550 stores they are all uh, available to sell to customers all over the country so so i think that's the best part of the technology which helps you go to the customers wherever they are and make use of the inventory or the stocks we are having in a store not just to the local customers but to the customers mm-hmm. everywhere in the world so i think i that is magical so i think that will uh, definitely give us much more big uh, boost in the market for the future right so uh, the nuances in tastes and colors and habits have to be understood over the years when it comes to you know understanding your customers so you being a stalwart in the industry what is your understanding been of the indian audience when it comes to the retail industry Uh, see uh, as i told you know we've been th- there in this market for quite some time and we understand uh, you know like uh, india is so big you know and like down south north east you know choices are so much different and different uh, we have all type of seasons in different uh, there's some somewhere which is raining so heavily and there's somewhere you know it's like a drought and there's somewhere you know it's uh, you know so cold so you have to actually know your markets and uh, even uh, you know the customers today in india i feel they are one of the most intelligent customers in the world you know they they know what they are buying and they want uh, value for money and uh, you know today even if you go to a small town like when you were talking about tier 2 tier 3 cities you know we we uh, been uh, been uh been able to sell in many of these cities small towns we even have stores there but we have a lot of multi brand channel also to sell there so to understand a youth you know who is sitting in a remote uh town in somewhere in bihar you know and uh, what he likes and what she likes so you know like it's very very important to understand uh, the mentality of but i think you know with our kind of brand you know where we we, we are selling uh, a lifestyle as i told you we are selling a eco friendly so uh, for us it's much more easier and i would say we are very value for money also you know because we want to give the best product you know in fact people say you know like woodland shoes okay yaar ye to tootte hi nahi hai you know so uh, means if 
it's not good for us because uh, if the shoes won't go bad nobody will buy new shoes but they say ultimately we'll have to we have to throw the shoes away so you know it's a compliment because people believe in our trust in our brand and then you know, like uh, we're giving them a product which is probably if they go abroad they'll have to pay four times the price you know so right. uh, understood the indian market and the same product if i sell overseas the price will be much higher you know because uh, we've given the best quality we've incorporated the top technologies even the way we make you know our, our factories are equipped with the latest technology from germany to make shoes you know because normally shoes or garments they are made a lot of manually and you know like there's a lot of uh, hand hand work done so there are chances of quality problems so we have uh, machines which are robotic machines which you know work on their own so everything is measured you know and the, all the raw materials are you know got from the best places so so we put a lot in our product we believe if the product is good uh, you know uh, it it becomes a big tool to sell you know so uh, no matter how good is your marketing strategy but the product is the king you know and we have to we have to deliver that so uh, that way you know like uh, we feel that even today you know our customers are we we go i personally go through the customer complaints if we have customer complaints and we see you know even uh, there can be a mistake but we try not to do that again you know and we try to rectify it from the root so it's right. very important to understand the customer to deliver the right product and if any problem then solve the problem and you know like because the same customer is going to come to you again and again so very right sir so uh, i'm sure as a natural consequence of the pandemic there must have been some irreversible changes whether in terms of consumer behavior or business realities that you as a brand uh, leader must have noticed can you share a few of the changes that you anticipate in the consumer behavior or business realities in the coming time see about 2 months back you know we did a survey and you know like uh, we went to our distributors we asked them what do you want you know because at that time things were not so clear so yeah. we all uh, didn't want to make something which tomorrow doesn't sell so everybody was saying uh, you know you try and uh, bring down the prices do cheaper products you know and you know because people are not going out they're sitting at home they're working from yeah. home so they don't need formal shoes True. they don't True. need Uh, expensive shoes they just need slippers and they need you know something which they can change very fast so we 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 started developing things like that but you know actually uh, speaking you know like we are not an indoor brand you know so we are an outdoor brand so it yeah. didn't really very well very well so uh, of course we added that line to our product uh, mm-hmm. line but of course you know we still we uh, and now you know like at this time when things are getting better we still feel the demand is still good for our original products you know which are our core products so you know like right. whether it's an auto jacket which has waterproofing which has insulation which has membranes which can you know like uh, make the jackets breathable so those kind of products still are the best sellers you know so people are going out they need products with technology so um, so which are supposed to be higher in price but of course yeah. uh, seeing both the things we balanced the thing very well very nice so my last question for today uh, you know engaging with the customers will be a, cr- a critical differentiator between a success and failure of a brand what is woodland's playbook for the gro- uh, brand growth strategy in the post covid era see we've actually been a very uh, you know uh, i would say very slow brand you know we we don't believe in numbers you know so some some people tell me you know why don't you grow much faster it's been 27 years and you are still very slow you know other brands have taken over and there are new com- new brands coming in so why you are like that i said you know like we we still believe in the slow growth uh theory you know so um <laughs> covid has uh, really uh, reinforced that to us you know that 
uh, you know you should not uh, overdo over uh, overgrow so we we believe in a slow growth and you know like these problems i think you know like uh, god god forbid it should be uh, not repeated these kind of problem but of course anything can happen you know a pandemic like this happened in uh, i remember i was in hong kong and we had sars over there and you know there was like a big uh, you know like a big problem over there but uh, they overcame it you know and uh, this uh, corona came again you know so these things can come back again so we we always have to learn from these uh, situations and try to uh, you know be more uh, flexible and uh, see how you know we can sustain such such setbacks you know so i think uh, that's the biggest learning one should take from such uh, situations and uh, of course you know like uh, we also had to go through a bad time but uh, uh, i think you know like it's always better to grow in a way where you can sustain the growth and uh, keep focused on your products and uh, your customers and try to you know like uh, try to uh, overcome these problems thank you sir thank that was a wonderful answer and and a wonderful interview thank you so much for your time sir uh, i'm sure this interview will uh, benefit the audiences as well thank you nice talking to you it was a pleasure